I use skipping the methods and results section of paper because you don't know what they mean or the lack of understanding about statistics is holding you back from starting your research project? Fear not, I will give you an easy to understand tutorial with examples. These are some short clips from my course and I will not be talking about formulas or equations. If you're not a statistician, you won't need all these formulas in detail. There are plenty of powerful statistical softwares to help you run the analysis. Now the problem with software is that as long as you put any number in, they will spit out some results. So you will still need to understand the fundamental concepts and the intuition behind the statistical analysis and also the type of statistical test to choose. And if you're working with a statistician, understanding why we choose a certain test is important so that you can have a meaningful conversation with them. Let's dive right in. In this lesson, we will be talking about the differences between descriptive and inferential statistics. What is descriptive statistics? Basically, you are describing something. And descriptive statistics do not allow us to draw conclusion beyond the data we have. What it's used for is to know what your sample is like. Uh, because the nature of your sample would determine the type of statistical test. The second purpose of this is to show the pattern of the data. And the third is to summarize the data, for example, mean, median, and percentages. How do you describe data? If it's continuous, we think about three things. First is the frequency, that means how much. Number two, we think about central tendency, like how much they are in the middle averages in terms of mean or median. And the third concept is variability or the spread of the values. And so look at this figure here. The middle here where I have the arrow is the central tendency. This is where I, the median is or the mean is. And at the bottom here, this range, this is the spread or the variability of the data. We report averages or central tendencies based on the distribution of data. Look at this figure here. The right in the middle is a symmetrical distribution, and so that's a normal distribution of data. And on the right is negatively skewed, skewed or just non-normal, and also on the left is positive skew, but non-normal. Let's talk about central tendencies. Look at this a bunch of numbers, 6, 5, 3, 7, 7, 9, 2, 4, 5. To get the mean, you add all these numbers and divide by 9, and you get 5.1. And then what's median? Median, you sort them up from low to high and find the very middle point, and that is the median. Next, we need to know the spread and the variability. The same example, because this is a normal distribution, the right and the left or the standard deviation are equal on both sides. So we can use plus or minus one standard deviation. So that's how we define the spread. Next, if you have data that is not normally distributed, your standard deviation, if you use standard deviation, is not going to be equal on both sides. So what instead, what you want to do is to report on the interquartile range which is you split the whole data into 25%, 25%, 25%, 25% quartile, and know where they are at. So in this example, median is 5, the 25% interquartile range is 3.5, and the 75th quartile is 7. How you report your averages and spread is based on the distribution of data. For here, right in the middle, if it's symmetrical, you report the mean and the plus minus standard deviation, because as you can see, both right and left will be equal. Now, if it is non-normal, not a symmetrical distribution, the one on the left here, you want to report on the median and the interquartile range, the 20, specifically the 25th and 75th um, interquartile range. So some example of descriptive statistics. The first one is frequency, right? So this is a piece of strawberry cake. And the frequency question you have is how many pieces of strawberries do you have here? 
The next question, averages. What sort of averages can you ask? What is the weight of strawberries per slice? Maybe you can say the median weight is 20 milligrams. Then the third question is, what's the spread? What's the variability? Um, perhaps I found that it's not symmetrical. It's not a, a, a symmetrical distribution. So I report on the interquartile range. It, some um, pieces will have 15 and some up to 22 milligrams. So let me show you an example from a real research paper. I want you to focus on the leftmost column, the variable side. And I want to show you the differences when you're reporting something in both the continuous way or the categorical way. Here, the first one is age, and you can tell it is a continuous variable. And at the bottom, they split up the age into different age groups. So it has become a categorical data. Now, because the data is different, how do we summarize it? It's different. The first one is the first row, age in continuous data form. We reported the median and the interquartile range. And now for the bottom on the categorical data, how did we report it? We reported the frequency and the proportion or the percentages. Next, inferential statistics. Inferential statistics allow us to draw a conclusion beyond the data we have. So there are three main things we usually draw a conclusion on. First is we are trying to compare two groups. We're trying to make associations and three, make predictions. I'm going to use this little baby as an example. What you want to do is to measure this baby's height. And the three type of statistics, first is a comparison test. And the question we're trying to ask is, is the mean height of this a two-year baby in country A different from country B? So it's just, is there a difference between these two? The second type of question is correlation. Is age correlated with height? That's the second type of inferential question we have. The third one is regression. Here is even further. How much does the baby's height increase per year? Now, if you feel like this is so overwhelming for you, don't worry, we will go into each individual test in more detail. It will be much clearer later. Now, I want to show you an, a snippet from a research paper just to illustrate how it actually looks in a statistical analysis section. Typically, the first paragraph will be on the descriptive statistics, how the authors want to uh, uh, describe their population. And then further down will be all the different tests and analyses in terms of inferential statistics. So typically, it's not only one paragraph, but multiple paragraphs, depending on how many outcomes you're looking at. In this lesson, we will be focusing on how to choose your statistical test. When you choose a statistical test, it is based on four main things. First is types of data. We are talking about count, continuous, binary, nominal, ordinal, the thing we co covered in the first uh, lesson. The second one is samples or how many groups are there. One sample, two sample, three or more samples. The third criteria, distribution. Basically, normal distribution versus non-normal distribution. And number four, purpose. What's the purpose of the statistical test? Are you doing comparison tests? That means you're comparing, comparing um, two statistics. Are you doing correlation tests, which is looking at the relationship between two variables? And the third is regression tests, looking at how one variable predicts the other. Now, we have talked about types of data in one of the lessons earlier, so I'm going to go straight to samples. So samples means group. It could, let's start with one sample. And when it comes to one sample, there are two versions. One is called unpaired sample. Another one is paired sample. Unpaired means a sample, one sample of baby, for example, one sample of babies born at the children's hospital. Whereas for paired, it is still one group of patients, but you're looking at them twice. One example is a group of patients with on, uh, on dialysis. And you want to look at your weight before dialysis and after dialysis, how much fluid is removed. And so that is a paired sample. Next, two samples. 
This is simple enough. You have two groups, one group with no diabetes, one group with diabetes. So that's two samples. Then you have three or more samples, no diabetes, diabetes well controlled or diabetes uncontrolled. The next criteria distribution. Again, it's all about normal or non-normal. If it's a normal distribution, we call we use parametric tests. If it's non-normal, we use non-parametric tests. The fourth one, purpose. Compared to statistics, it's called comparison tests. Looking at the extent of relationship between the two variables, we call it correlation tests. And when we are looking at how an exposure variable changes the outcome variable or how one variable predicts the other, it's called regression test. And I like to show this as an example, so it's much, much more concrete. And um, the first one is comparison. It's a mean height of a two-year-old baby in country A different from country B. Right? You're just saying A versus B. Is there a difference? Correlation is a bit further. Is age correlated with height? And then as a regression, it's even deeper. How much does the baby's height increase per year? Let's dive deeper. Comparison tests. The basic question is, is A different from B? For example, is 40% different from 20%? Is the mean value of A, 4.2, different from mean value of B, 2.6? The main thing is we don't want to determine that it's different based on feelings, but based on statistical tests. Because maybe to me, 40% is very different uh, from 20%. But another person, you know, they say as long as it's less than 50%, 40% is not much different from 20%. So we don't want to base anything based on feelings, but based on statistical tests. There are different types of comparison tests. When you're comparing two proportions, like two percentages, you use z-tests. If you are comparing two means, like mean blood glucose of diabetics versus non-diabetic group, you can you use a t-test. If it's one sample, or you use paired t-tests. That means you measure the same person twice, before and after. If there are three means, three groups, mean blood glucose of three groups, you use ANOVA, and there are many more. Let me show you an example from a research paper. Paper Comparison tests are typically seen in the baseline characteristic table or the basic demographic table. So let's look at this group, no AKI versus AKI. There are two groups, and the variables we're looking is hospital disposition, discharge, expired, or currently hospitalized. And so let's look at discharge. The differences between these two is 79% versus 26%, right? So on surface value, it is different, but what does the, but what does the statistical test say? The p-value less than 0.01, .01. and so it is statistically different from each other. And if you look at this red box here, it's mentioned that comparisons are made between no AKI and AKI using Fisher exact tests for categorical variables and or non-parametric Kruskal-Wallis tests for continuous variables. So they have mentioned the different tests they use to compare these two groups. Next, let's talk about correlation tests. Here, you are trying to look at the extent of the, or the strength of the relationship between two variables. And when you have two, when you're comparing two continuous variables, you use Pearson's R. If you have a continuous and with ordinal variables, you use Spearman's R. If you use chi-square test, it's basically comparing two categorical variables. You can actually get a, the, the strength of association, but it's typically used to show that one variable is not related to the other variable. Then the third one is regression test. It determines how an independent variable causes change in a dependent variable. As the example I've used earlier, how much does the baby's height increase per year? 
How do you choose the test? You choose the test depending on the outcome of the data. So for example, your outcome is a continuous outcome, height. Then the test you are going to choose is a linear regression. And the ultimate result you're looking for is the beta coefficient or the slope of the line. We're going to go into this a little bit deeper later. Next is binary outcome. If your outcome is a yes or no only, dead or alive, true outcome, you use logistic regression. And the final results you're looking for is the odds ratio. And then the third one is a time to event analysis. This is time where you actually add time component. Here you use Cox regression model and the result you're looking for is hazard ratio. There are other types of regression, but I think these three are the main ones you see in research papers. So now remember we have four criteria, the type of data, um, the distribution, the number of samples or groups, and the different purposes. Because there's so many variables, it can get very complex in terms of which test to use. And so this is a simple table. There are even more complex and even more extensive tables, but this is a good one to start with. The goal is not for you to be able to uh, decide with a step of your finger which test, but more be more deliberate as you think through your statistical analysis, what sort of criteria you need. And when you talk to your statistician, uh, you know what goes behind how they choose the statistical tests. All right, let me know in the comments below if you want more videos about data and statistics. See you in the next video.